Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made the best burger I have ever had in my entire life. In my opinion, getting a great burger really relies on two elements. First is the burger grind, and second is the seasoning. I'm gonna cover both of those in these videos, kind of breaking it into two parts. You can do either part, or you can do both. I recommend doing both if you want the ultimate umami smash burger. I don't know if you've noticed, but meat is not cheap these days and it seems to keep going up. The price on a pound of ground chuck is $5.39. However, the price of a far superior piece of meat, a packer brisket, is only $3.69 a pound. Now it is going to be more expensive initially because you got to buy a whole packer brisket that's pretty big it's 16 18 pounds and you got to grind it yourself but i'm telling you if you've got the hardware to do it whether it's a meat grinder or the grinder attachment for a KitchenAid, the payoff is so so worth it if you want to get really really anal retentive and know exactly what sort of fat percentage you have in your burger grind you can carve up your brisket and separate the fat from the lean bits, weigh them all out, and control the ratio that way. I've done that in the past, and honestly, it's more work than it's worth. Most packer briskets are gonna fall into that 70 to maybe 75% lean, give or take, and that's really where we wanna be for a super juicy, super flavorful burger. So my advice is just carve it up and get grinding, which is what we're gonna do right now. Here's my packer brisket, which is both the point and the flat of the brisket, and you see a little fat strip right here. You can carve that off if you want to create a leaner grind of beef, but I don't. I want to keep it right up there in that 70% or right down there in that 70% range. I'm going to carve up the brisket into chunks that'll fit down the chute or tube of my meat grinder, and I'm going to wind up having two big bowls full. Towards the end, I just started cutting it into strips because I figured once the strip goes down and gets into the auger, it'll just pull the meat right through. So here we go, between 18 and 19 pounds of brisket. I'm gonna put this into the freezer for 15 to 30 minutes. This really helps with the grind as it stiffens up a little bit. I also freeze the blade die and auger for my meat grinder. This helps keep the meat grinder cool, which is very important because once it starts to heat up, the meat will emulsify and it starts coming out more like a paste, sort of like hot dog meat. Put on my blade. And then I'm using the coarse or medium grind die for the first grind. Power this on to medium, medium low, and start feeding in the chunks of meat. The first grind, pretty easy to do just as a single person operation. Anytime a chunk gets stuck, I just use the plunger and push it through. After the first grind, I return both of those bowls of meat to the freezer for 15 to 30 minutes. I also refreeze the auger, die, and blade for the grinder. I don't know the specific size in millimeters of the two die that I used, but generally when you have a grinder, you're going to have three or more grinding die. One is going to be for a coarse grind, like for stew meat and chili. Then there's a medium grind, which is often for bratwursts or Italian sausages, some kind of sausage making. And that's what we used in the first grind. For the second grind though, we're gonna use the smaller grind, which is for the burger meat. Once again, I remove my frozen hardware from the freezer and assemble my meat grinder. This time using the finest die that I have, or the small die. And also at this point, it's a two person operation. My wife, creates little cylinders of meat that drop down into the feeding tube, and I push them through with the plunger. Teamwork makes the dream work. When all's said and done, we've got about 18 pounds of ground brisket here that I'm gonna weigh out and put into some vacuum sealed bags. Now, rather than weighing out the individual bags, which is kind of a messy operation, I put the entire bowl of meat onto my scale, tear it down to zero, and then 
start feeding the meat into the bag. Once I hit minus two, I know I've got two pounds of meat in the bag. And bingo. I wound up having seven two pound bags, one three pound bag, and enough left over for a little burger experiment coming up next. Now that we have our ground meat, let's see how it compares to that ground chuck from before. I'm just going to fry up a couple burgers on cast iron and see how they turn out. I've got a chuck burger in front and the two brisket burgers in back. You'll notice the brisket burgers have got more of that browning or Maillard reaction going on. Once they're on the plate, you can see the chuck burger and the much better crust on the brisket burger. When I slice open the chuck, it's definitely more firm. It's a decent looking burger, a little pink in the center. And here's the brisket burger. Practically falls apart. It's a little bit smaller because more fat rendered out of it. And even though they were both cooked to the same temperature, more pink inside. All right, first the ground chuck. It's decent, I mean, it's meat, so yum. Now, let's grab a chunk of the, uh, I don't even need a knife. This uh, practically falls apart. So here's the ground brisket. If the ground chuck is like eating a burger, this is like eating a steak. Oh my goodness. All right, we, you need a second opinion. A lot of difference, yeah. So I got the regular meat here, the ground chuck. It's a little dry. So both these burgers were the same thickness and I cooked them to the same internal temperature. Well, juice <laughs> squirted out of my hot, yeah, way better, this stuff. The brisket, yeah, delicious. It's juicy, and this was just, yeah, dry, normal. Somebody else made it. <laughs> now it's time to make our umami bomb powder. Umami is the fifth flavor. So you have sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and then umami. Umami is a savory taste. We have taste receptors for it, but it doesn't have a specific flavor. And in fact, the word umami in Japanese roughly translates to deliciousness. Umami flavor is most prevalent in foods that are high in glutamates. So things like seaweed, beef, cheese, seafood, tomatoes, anchovies. And in fact, on a piece of dried kombu seaweed, this white powder right here, that's nature's MSG. There's a lot of controversy about MSG, and I'm gonna link to a video by Harold McGee, author of On Food and Cooking. This book at the Culinary Institute of America is referred to as the Bible. This guy knows his stuff. But I'm gonna link to a video by him that he did on a PBS show about MSG. I'll put that down in the description. But I'm just going to read a little bit from the book here where it says, Beginning in the late 1960s, MSG was blamed for the Chinese restaurant syndrome, in which distressing sensations of burning, pressure, and chest pain suddenly strike susceptible people who begin a Chinese meal with MSG-laden soup. Many studies later, toxicologists have concluded that MSG is a harmless ingredient for most people, even in large amounts. That said, what we are creating is a completely natural form of MSG. It's just a glutamate-laden flavor bomb. To make our umami powder, we want to weigh out our ingredients, starting with some shiitake mushrooms. We have one ounce or 28 grams. And this wasn't luck. I weighed it out before I started filming. See? One ounce. Then we have some kombu seaweed. Again, one ounce or 28 grams. 
Hooray! Finally, we have a packet of Bonito Flakes. Two grams, unless you include the plastic on the packet, then it's four. We're going to put these into a spice grinder or coffee grinder, but you'll see the mushrooms are a little too big to fit in. So I'm going to pop them into a little Ziploc bag and pound them into smaller pieces. Now those should fit into the spice grinder quite nicely, though I'm not going to be able to get the entire bag in at once. Probably about two-thirds to three-quarters of the bag, minus the pieces that fall onto my cutting board. As you grind, you should make sure that you're shaking it. Otherwise, you'll get some larger, lighter chunks that just sort of surf on top of the whirlpool of powder. And now we have enough room to add the remainder of our shiitake. Oops. And we'll give this another grind. Again, shaking while grinding. I'll flip it over, bang it on the counter a little bit. That'll get all the dust off the blade. And there we go. Shiitake powder. I'm going to put this in a bowl and set this off to the side while I do my kombu seaweed. Now hammering this isn't going to do me any good, so I'm going to break it into bits. And it is snowing MSG right now. Pop on the cover, give this a good grind, pulsing and shaking, until basically I have created aerosol MSG powder. I'll then add my Bonito Flakes, also called Katsuobushi, and grind that in with the kombu. I'll dump that in with the mushroom powder. And then we move on to probably the most boring step in this. Fortunately, it doesn't take long, three, maybe four minutes, as we sift y'all. I do this for two reasons. One, it helps mix the powder together, but also if there are any big chunks that the spice grinder didn't get, those aren't going to go through the sieve. After I've pushed all the powder through the sieve, I still have, I don't know, maybe three or four tablespoons of larger chunks here. And those will go back into the spice grinder for a few seconds of grinding and shaking. We'll sift this once again. And at this point, probably any chunks that are left over are still going to be fine enough. Pretty much like coarse ground black pepper, and it's mostly seaweed. That's fine. I just don't want to hit any big mushroom chunks in my burger. I'll stir this in. And satisfied, I will give it a taste. It's really kind of wild because there's no real flavor you can pick out. Despite the katsuobushi or bonito flakes and the, the uh, seaweed, there's no sort of sea or oceany sort of taste to it. It's, it's almost flavorless, but it really, really gets your salivary glands going. It's, it's, it's savory without flavor, if that makes sense. But now we're going to take it up a notch. Our first optional ingredient is Worcestershire sauce powder. I'm going to add one tablespoon of that, or 10 grams, to my umami dust. Give it a little whisk and a taste. Okay, that is really starting to amp up the flavor. If you're going to use this on a burger, I highly recommend using the Worcestershire sauce. But we're still not done. Optional ingredient number two is beef broth base. And you might think that's sort of cheating for amping up the beef flavor, but if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I'm going to use two teaspoons of that, or five grams. Again, whisk that in. 
and then I'll transfer that to an airtight container where it will live until I've eaten it all. Right now, this is just a beefy, savory flavor explosion in my mouth. I cannot wait to put this on a burger. Now, the first time you make this powder, you may just want to buy smaller packets of the ingredients. I've made it enough times, and I know that I love it, that I buy it in bulk. So I've got some big bags of dried shiitake mushrooms and bonito flakes, or katsuobushi. You can also get bonito flakes in these small little packets here. They're two grams, which is the exact amount that I use in the recipe. I will link to these down in the description below. Another thing that I'll link to and I highly recommend in any pantry is desiccant packets. I put these in any sort of a dry powder, rub, anything like that that I make. Something that I don't want to get any moisture in. And I don't want any moisture in my umami powder, especially that Worcestershire powder. That can start to get a little bit hard, that can turn into a rock, and we don't want that. I have two brisket blend future burger patties right here without any of the umami dust on them. This will be for a taste test later. And then to the remaining one pound of ground brisket, I'm going to add a half a tablespoon of my umami bomb dust. Just sort of sprinkling it on the top here. Then I want to gently mix this in, just kind of using my fingertips here. I don't want to mush it together. I don't want to create an emulsion because that creates sort of a stiff and potentially dry burger. Then I'm going to do my best to sort of eyeball four equal size quarter pound burger patties or future burger patties. Right now they're just balls. Looks like I got pretty close. So now we're going to take these out to my griddle, which I've preheated to 550 degrees Fahrenheit or around 290 Celsius. Grab my spatulas and smash. The sound of a sizzling smash burger is practically music to my ears. Once I start to see some brown crispy around the edges, I'm going to give them a flip. Look at that nice crust. And then I'm going to add some cheese. Typically, I would do a thick cut deli American cheese, but I don't have any of that, so I'm using some sharp cheddar. Use whatever cheese you want. I just find the American melts really, really well. We'll close the lid and let that cheese melt. And then we'll plate up our burgers. Going pretty simple here. Just some no sugar added ketchup, some mustard, and some sliced onion. One patty good enough or do you want a double? I'll also put a couple burgers off to the side for a blind taste test. All right, so now I'm gonna have you test the two burgers. One of those has the umami powder, one does not. Would that taste like not? I think so. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this one has the flavor and that one does not. It's rough. All right, you are correct. Okay. Now my turn. <laughs> That's still really good. That, that crust you get on these with the brisket is just, it's amazing. Mm, that is, that is a good burger. <laughs> oh, wow. My smile muscles hurt. <laughs> That's how good this is. Oh, yeah, that umami powder, that brings it. Now I've got my actual burger. This is on a Lewis low-carb or keto bun. I got sugar-free, no sugar-added ketchup. So it's about as keto as you can get for a burger. If you're a child of the 70s and 80s, you probably remember those Wendy's commercials where they're just wiping off their faces from, from the juice. That's what this is like. 
Wow. I get a double quarter pounder here. Making McDonald's. Mm. So juicy on the inside, but crispy on the outside. Very good. It's way better than McDonald's double quarter pounder. Well, that's a low cheese. bar. Is it the best burger you've <laughs> it's ever the had? the best burger I ever had. It's really juicy. <laughs> good job, dear. Thanks. One of the reasons this video took me so long is I had to put a fair amount of effort into trying to calculate the macronutrients on the three different variations of umami powder. And let me tell you, it's basically nothing on a per serving basis. So for a pound of beef, I would recommend starting with one half tablespoon and see what you think. You can either ratchet it up or ratchet it down from there. Or if you're metric, do about a tablespoon to a kilo. Now, in terms of the carb and calorie count, it is ridiculously low. So if you do just the base three ingredient umami powder, it's 0 0.04 grams of total carbs on a quarter pounder. If you add just the Worcestershire powder, that takes you up to 0.12 grams of total carbs per serving and still less than one calorie. And if you do the full boat, all five ingredients, you're looking at 0.16 grams of total carbohydrates per serving on a quarter pounder and about one calorie. So if you're looking at the ingredients on either the Worcestershire powder or the beef base and you see maltodextrin and that sends up a red flag for you, I would say it's not worth caring about because the amounts are so, so very tiny. So as I said at the top of this video, you don't necessarily have to do both of these two things if you don't want. Maybe you don't have a meat grinder and you just want to make the umami powder and add it to the best ground beef that you can find at the supermarket. You're going to totally amp up your burger game. And this rub is really pretty versatile. You can use it on way more things than just burgers. You could put it on steaks. You could even use it as a rub on ribs. You can put it in soups or stews or sauces or gravies or anything you want to add a little bit more savoriness to. And if you don't feel like making the powder but still got a meat grinder, I highly recommend you give grinding your own brisket a try. You'll probably never go back to regular store ground beef again. But it's when you combine the two, the ground brisket and the umami powder, that the magic really happens. So I encourage you to give it a try. One thing I didn't cover in this video is toppings, and that's just not a rabbit hole I want to go down right now. I'm giving you the method to make the best burgers. You top it however you like. So if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And if you really, really, really loved it, click that thanks button so I can buy more brisket. I already got plenty of the powder ingredients. And I'm going to throw a couple videos up here too, as long as we're grilling. Thanks for watching.